All right, so we have talked about, you know, how do we add and subtract fractions if we have the same denominator. Now the next uh, logical step would be, what do we do if we do not have the same denominator? So let's start back with regular plain old fractions, and we'll try to remember how this worked. Okay, so we had one half plus one third. We have different denominators, so before we can actually, uh, you know, start adding these fractions, we have to have that common denominator. So we have to figure out what will both of these numbers go into. Uh, another word or another term for the least common denominator is the least common multiple. We look at um, the multiples of 2 and the multiples of 3. So the multiples of 2 would be things like 2, 4, 6, 8, so on and so forth. The multiples of 3 would be 3, 6, 9, and continuing on. We're going to try and find the least or the smallest multiple that they have in common. And in this case, for 2 and 3, that would be a 6. Now, we say, what do we multiply by 2 to get 6? And that would have to be 3. So we do the exact same thing to the top. 1 times 3 would be 3. So now we've created an equivalent fraction. Okay, for the second fraction, 3 times 2 would give us a 6. So we have to do the same thing to the top to keep it balanced. 1 times 2 would be 2. Now that we have a common denominator, we can go ahead with the same rules that we have been using to add fractions. We'll um, work with the numerators over that common denominator. So the numerators would, are 3 and 2. So when we add those together, we would get 5, 6. So remember, the most important part of working with rationals is you must have a common denominator in order to be able to work with them. All right, so uh, what we know about numbers, now let's apply to um, numbers and letters, or, you know, true rational expressions. Okay, so here we have 3 over 4x cubed, and we have 9 over 8x, and we're going to try and find the least common denominator here. Okay, well, but let's look at the number parts first. We have a 4 and we have an 8. The common multiple, the smallest common multiple, would be an 8. So with the numbers, it's not so bad. Now it comes to the letter parts, though. x cubed is really x times x times x. And x to the first power is just x. So we need the smallest multiple that these will both go into. When it comes to just plain old letters, these are actually much, much easier than anything else. We just have to take that highest power of the variable because if we multiply this by 1, we get x cubed. And we can change x into x cubed by multiplying by something. So therefore, that tells us that our least common denominator here would be 8x cubed. Let's look at another one. Here we have, a, we want to find a common denominator for these two fractions. Well, in this denominator, x minus 4 is an entire item. It stays together. You either use x minus 4 or you use nothing. You can't break it apart because this is a binomial. It's one item. Likewise with the x plus 2. This is a binomial, so it is one item. So whenever we go to find our LCD, we have to say that would be the x minus 4 and also the x plus 2. If we don't account for both of them, we're going to have a missing part.